Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Coin Week editor Charles Morgan. I'm at the ANA World's Fair of Money with a very important figure in American numismatics. This is David Ryder, the U.S. Mint director. It's the first time the Mint's had a director in a while, but this isn't your first time in the rodeo. What, what's changed at the Mint since the last time you were the director? The number one change has been our customer base. Uh, we're now Mint director number 34 in the mid-90s. Uh, we had about 2.7 million active customers. And since that time, the active customer base has fallen below 500,000. So one of my jobs is to, is to beef up our customer base, create new products, and try to get some of those customers back, as well as, most important, getting new young collectors involved in this hobby. It's interesting we say that, because about 80% of the collectors who come to our site are under the age of 55. In fact, the 10-year age spread is pretty even. It's like 20%, 18 to 25, 20%, 25 to 35, and, and so on. What do you think contributed to the Mint's shifting demographic, whereas the hobby at large seems like it does have a viable younger collecting base? Well, I think it's important to understand that young kids starting at an early age need to be educated about coin collecting. Right. And the benefits to it. And we are, in our website, really focusing on kids in the collecting community through education, trying to create educational programs. Uh, the demographics have shifted, I think, upwards to the older adults, right. uh, which I think is why our, our customer base has dropped. Right. Uh, they're getting, they're either retiring, they, they don't want to participate uh, in the coin collecting hobby any longer. My job, Mint's job, is to create new products that collector bases from old the young uh, can collect it uh, through pricing points and creating interesting programs. Uh, today we're going to be introducing a collector card set right. that comprises, I think, of seven cards of our mint, mighty mitters. Right. Uh, and it's it's based for young kids, and it's a giveaway. It's right. free. We're not charging for it. Right. Why? Speaking of free products or freemium, uh, freemium products, if you will, uh, one of the things, like when you go back to like the heyday of the hobby in the 1960s, a lot of the dealers today grew up around this period of time and they remember pulling out rare, valuable coins from change. And something that your mint did in 2019 was that they not only put some W mint proof products out uh, in the numismatic area, we also integrated a very limited number of W mint circulating coins into, into change so Americans can find these more valuable coins in, in their pocket change. I, I think that that was a tremendous success. Like it, it created that opportunity that hasn't really existed since silver was pulled out of circulation for you to find something special in your change. Is there any chance that the mint would consider doing this? Or was the logistics of actually striking that limited number of coins and, and then seeding them, was it like too costly for the mint to carry on? No, no, we're very much behind that. We started the W Quarter program right. uh, with the West Point Mint, where we, where we manufacture a very minimal volume of quarters that get infiltrated or combined with our shipments from the Philadelphia and West Point, uh, or the Philadelphia and Denver Mints, right. uh, and they get distributed throughout the, the, the cash cycle uh, system with the Federal Reserve. Right. It's been very popular. Uh, we also introduced the W Penny, right. uh, that's very popular. Uh, that's a proof penny that goes in, in a couple of our coin sets, uh, and it's it's a program that we have been getting a lot of high marks for. Right. So we're gonna we're gonna continue. So coin collectors can expect this program to go on, possibly with other denominations. Stay tuned. Right. We might yeah. see some new things coming. So so is is there a plan to consider uh, to continue the circulating W Mint program into 2020 and beyond? Or? Absolutely. Oh, that's maybe that's, with different denominations. Yeah, different denominations. That's very cool. One, one of the challenges I, I've been to a couple of the US, uh, World Mint Directors conferences, and one of the challenges I think I face as the different World Mints as circulating coin producing enterprises is the uh, devaluation of low denomination coinage. You know that Europe is dealing with their own situation where they're dropping some copper coinage. We we have a similar issue, although I don't think there's a political will to change our circulating denominations, but the one cent coin and the five cent coin really have very limited purchasing power. One cent coin usually doesn't even get back into the, the feedback loop, it's usually people just hoard them. I've asked 
Ed Moy, I've asked Phil Deal and other mint directors, like if the mint has ever taken it when they were in, 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 in the uh, position, if they had ever like investigated introducing higher denomination coinage, testing it, like researching it, going to the treasury and advocating for it. And I've never gotten a satisfactory answer where they've said, yes, we've done that. Is that something that concerns you that the future viability of coins has a expiration date if higher denomination coins aren't introduced? The current mint policy is to stay the status quo with the penny and the nickel and, and our other denominations. There's nothing underway right now that's going to introduce something higher than a one dollar coin. The big problem that the mint has had is the co-circulation of a one dollar coin and a one dollar note at the same time. Right. That's a policy that's not going to change. I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. It's not the direction the mint's going towards. Um, that said, at some point down the road, probably after I'm gone, it probably is something that, that the government might want to take a look at, purely from a cost point, point of view and so on. But currently, right now, the mint's not considered. Right. Well, one of the problems that I've noticed with the one dollar coin, just in general, is that one dollar doesn't have enough buying power for it to be viable. So if you consider maybe you're going to buy a lunch at a fast food restaurant, it's 11 or 12 dollars and you're not going to have a roll of coins to pay for it. So that, to me, it just seems like we've gone beyond the fact that the, the dollar today is maybe where, what the quarter was in the 1980s. This is probably true. However, um, unless and if the government decides, or quite frankly, it's Congress who has to decide this, is, and it's not mint policy, it's the United States Congress that makes the legislation. Right. In order to do what you're asking to do, Congress has to make that, has to make that decision and change it on their own. Um, I don't think that's going to happen uh, anytime soon, uh, but if it, if it is something that someone wants to take up, and people have, certain congressmen and senators have. Right. Uh, as of right now, all I can tell you is it's not the mid policy and we're not going to change it. Sure. Uh, the American Bullion Coin Program is one of the leading bullion coin programs in the world. Uh, and uh, in recent years, we've seen an influx of Chinese counterfeits of uh, popular bullion coins, not just Americans, Canadians, every other bullion coin imaginable. Uh, is the mint considered like uh, beefing up the security of, of those bullion uh, coins so that like collectors can have a little bit more peace of mind when they're buying them on the secondary market? Absolutely. We've got a whole new staff at the Philadelphia Mint who are specifically looking at this area. It concerns me. Uh, the bullion program is a Cadillac uh, collector coin, bullion coin in the, in the world. Uh, we are looking at, at possibly doing some things to change what goes into the bullion coin uh, to add probably three levels of security, a overt feature for the general public to see through special an eye loop or something like that. Right. Uh, a level two feature that's meant for people like in the that are here in the tray, right. and then a covert feature uh, for something for a forensic feature for mint uh, personnel and secret service to be able to detect. So yes, we are looking at that. And my guess is you can expect something in the near future. Would that would that entail a, desi a visible design change to the? Yes. Right. Yes. Very cool. Well, David, thank you very much. Uh, congratulations on a successful return to the men, and we look forward to seeing what the men's going to have for us in the new year. Thanks very much. Thank you. Appreciate it.